Hi there and welcome to episode 84 of Eric's Trains. This is the Great Locomotive Count of 2021. Alright, it is late February 2021 and I've actually had this video pretty much complete for two or three weeks now. I put out an early version of this video for my Patreon supporters a couple weeks ago and the only difference was that that version did not contain these scenes, the on-camera speaking parts, because these scenes are always the last ones that I film. And then right before I was going to film these scenes, I ended up coming down with a really nasty cold upper respiratory infection type of thing. And at least as far as doing videos goes, it put me out of commission for about a week or so. Now I did have a COVID test and it came back negative, but believe it or not, people do get sick from other things besides COVID. Now I'm actually not 100% healthy yet. I'm still kind of on the tail end of it. I'm feeling a lot better than I did a few days ago, but I'm still really stuffed up and my ears hurt and I can't hear very well. I'm not sure if the stuffed head is coming across in my voice, but yeah, not feeling perfect. And then on top of that, a couple days ago, I went outside and I got a nice sunburn on my head. So yeah, not in the best shape to be doing on-camera work, but I need to get it done because I want to get this video out, especially because since I was sick, I haven't been able to finish a lot of the other videos that I've been working on. Anyway, enough of that. Now on to the main subject, the Great Locomotive Count of 2021, where you'll get to see every locomotive of every scale and size that I have in my collection in this one video. This is actually the third Locomotive Count video Video I've done in recent years. The first count was done about five years ago in episode 53, and then in episode 65 about three years ago, I did an incremental update, and now here in 2021 for episode 84, you're going to get a full count from start to finish. Now, this was originally going to be an incremental update, which would have been a lot easier to film, but over the last three years, I haven't kept the best track of what came and went. And so in the end, it was easier to just start from scratch and do the count from start to finish, which I think you'll enjoy more anyway. But going forward in the future, I will be able to do more incremental updates because now I have all my locomotives in a nice Excel spreadsheet. And so I'm able to keep track of what comes and goes much easier. All right, so three years ago when I did the incremental update in episode 65, the total locomotive count for my collection was 231. So it'll be interesting to see how much that number has changed in the last three years. But before we get started, I do want to set a few ground rules. All right, so ground rule number one, what's being counted? Well, basically I'm counting anything that moves under its own power or that looks like it would move under its own power. So any powered locomotive, track mobile, speeder, trolley, or any non-powered locomotive. And this count is also inclusive of all scales in my collection. So you're not just going to see O scale today. You're going to see traditional O27, ON30, G gauge, standard gauge, and even some HO. Ground rule number two, how are the locomotives counted? Well, basically any locomotive that can move on its own or would be able to move on its own if it was powered, that's going to count as a single locomotive. And so the best example I can give of this is that if I show you an F3 ABBA consist with four units, that's going to count as four individual engines because each of those units could move on its own or would move on its own if it was powered. Ground rule number three. Now it goes without saying that you're going to see a lot of locomotives in this video and at some point you may be tempted to go down to the comments section and say, hey Eric, can you review this locomotive that I saw at this timestamp? Well, chances are I already have reviewed that locomotive or one very similar to it on this channel and you can watch the review anytime you want. So ground rule number three is that by and large unless I say so during the video you can assume that any locomotive you see has already been reviewed on this channel or I've already reviewed a locomotive very similar to that locomotive. So for example, I've got lots of Lionel SD70 ACEs in my collection, but I have not reviewed them all because a lot of them are identical except for the paint scheme. But rest assured, I have reviewed lots of Lionel SD70 ACEs. And of course, the easiest thing to do is if you see a locomotive that you like, go search for it on my channel and chances are you'll find a review for it or something very similar. And finally, ground rule number four, why am I making this video in the first place? Well, it's very simple. I'm making this video because you guys have asked for it. Now, believe it or not, some people, when they see a video like this, they get kind of jealous and hateful and they think I'm showing off or something. 
But the truth is, you know, I just turned 45 and I really don't feel the need to show off. And if I was going to show off, I certainly wouldn't do it by showing my trains on a YouTube video. I would go buy a fancy sports car or something, but I don't need to show off. You know, one of the nice things about getting older, one of the few nice things about getting older, is that the older you get, the less and less you care what people think about you. And so rest assured, I'm not doing this video for my benefit. I'm doing it because you guys have asked for it. Very simple. All right, so with all that said, let's go ahead and begin the great locomotive count of 2021. And we'll start by showing all the locomotives that are either in display cases or on display shelves here in the basement and up in the stairwell. All right, we are at the top of the stairwell leading down to the train room. And for the moment, it looks like Chessie's gonna join us. Hey, Chessie. So we'll start our engine count right here with this MTH Seaboard Coastline GP38. It's a beautiful model. And then next to that, we've got an MTH Sioux Line Transfer Diesel. This is one of my favorite oddball engines. It looks unlike anything else in my fleet. And then, if I don't step on Chessie, he's getting in the way right there. This is a Lionel UPSD70, number 8415. Very nice. And then next to that, we've got an old Atlas MP15 DC switcher. It's a beautiful model. I love that thing. Next to that, we've got this gorgeous MTH First Responders SD60E. It's a beautiful model. Then right here is a Lionel Conrail SD40. And around the corner from that is an MTH Pan Am GP40. And then next to that is the MTH rendition of the GE Evolution Hybrid number 2010. And of course, many of you know that I also have the Lionel Vision Line version of this model. Of course, the Vision Line model is far superior to the MTH model, but it should be because it costs about twice as much. And of course, that brings up the point that, you know, when you compare Lionel and MTH models, it's not always a fair comparison because Lionel often puts a lot more cool features into their models, but their models are subsequently more expensive whereas MTH gives you more model for your buck. So if you're looking for the best deal, MTH is usually the better choice. If you're looking for the best features, Lionel is usually the better choice. Anyway, below that, we've got an MTH UPAC 4400. And then next to that, we've got a Lionel Lion Chief Plus 2.0 Norfolk Southern SD80. Very nice semi-scale model. Right here is a Norfolk Southern Heritage diesel. This is the Lehigh Valley ES44. And then right here is a Lionel Burlington Northern SD60. Next to that, we've got a beautiful Lionel Canadian National ES44. Then we've got a really cool little engine. This is a Lionel Chicago Northwestern GP9. And then at the end here is another Norfolk Southern Heritage unit. This, of course, is the Pincy ES44. Below that, on the next row, we've got a Lionel Southern GP9 that I weathered. And next to that is a fairly recent acquisition. This is a Lionel Northern Pacific Terminal Company S2 switcher. And then next to that is a beautiful Rail King Stone Mountain GP7 from MTH. We've got an Apache Railway C420 from Lionel. And there's another one right next to it, different road number. Then we've got another Lionel Conrail SD40. Around the corner from that, we've got a weathered version of the Lionel Burlington Northern SD60 that you saw a moment ago. Then we've got a Lionel Conrail Trackmobile. And then we've got a very large MTH UP DD40X. On the next shelf down, we've got another Norfolk Southern Heritage unit. This is the Erie SD70. Then we've got a Lionel UP SD60. And then a Lionel Florida East Coast ES44. Around the corner from that is the Lionel Vision Line UP Centipede. This thing is massive. It's almost four feet long and is all die cast metal. And below that, we've got the Lionel UP DD35A, another big diesel. And next to that, we've got a Lionel UP SD70 ACE. This is the spirit of the Union Pacific. Support our troops. Around the corner from that, we've got the Lionel Vision Line Canadian Pacific ES44. And next to that is an MTH Canadian Pacific AC4400. 
And next to that is an Indiana Railroad SD90 from Lionel. Moving down from that, we've got a Lionel Milwaukee Road F7 set. This is an ABA set. And you know, I've had this for many years and I've never reviewed it. It's one of those things that just got put on the back burner and it stayed there. And I've now got newer F7 sets that I need to review. So chances are I'll probably never review this. Or if I do, maybe I'll do it in a quick video, like a Christmas Bonanza or something like that. And then next to that, we've got the Lionel New York Central Shark Nose Diesels. And I've talked about this before, but the space in between, when I got these out of the box, the space was really large because it had these big O-gauge couplers. So I replaced those with scale couplers, and now the gap is a little more reasonable than it was before. But yeah, those look really nice, and of course I weathered them as well. And then around the corner, well, here's the first steam locomotive of the day. This is the Lionel 466T that I reviewed not too long ago, I think in early December of 2020. And then right here, we've got a Lionel Central of Georgia F3AA set. This was a custom run done by Legacy Station, and I have not reviewed this set yet. I need to do that. I'll probably do it at some point in the near future, I hope. All right, we've reached the end of the metal shelving on this wall. We'll get to the wooden display case in just a moment. But around the corner here, we've got some Atlas F3A and B units. So we've got an A, B, B, A, A setup going on here. <laughs> Pretty cool. These Atlas F units are spectacular. And then at the very end here, we've got a Lionel Norfolk Southern Go Rail SD60E. Below that, we've got a Lionel Milwaukee Road Bipolar Electric. And this is one of the older ones that they did, I think around 2008 or so. I can't remember exactly. I've got some of the newer Bipolars they did a couple years ago as well. You'll see those in just a little bit, but this is a beautiful model. And next to that, we've got another MTH Canadian Pacific AC4400. I love the combo flag they have on these units. That was the main reason I got them. And then right here is a Lionel New York Central S2 electric with the swinging bell. And then right here is a Lionel Santa Fe F3 ABA set. It's a beautiful set. And I don't think I've reviewed this yet. And I really need to rectify that if I haven't because it's a gorgeous set. Below that, we've got a couple of Atlas Santa Fe Dash 8 diesels. Just two different road numbers. And then we've got a Lionel Santa Fe AC6000. This has always been a fan favorite. And then at the very end here, we've got a CSX Trackmobile made by Lionel. And now we'll make our way back to this display case. There I am. Go ahead and open up the plexiglass front here. Now, as I've said before, the aluminum display shelves are made by Glenn Snyder Display Systems. The wooden display cases are made by me using wood from Home Depot. They're really nothing fancy at all. So on the top shelf, we've got a Lionel CSX SD40-2 that's been weathered by me. And then next to that, we've got a Lionel Southern Pacific SD40 T2 tunnel motor. That's a really cool engine. And then down below, we've got a couple more CSX SD40-2s, and these are made by Atlas. On the next shelf down, we've got the Lionel Southern Pacific AC9. Below that, we've got the Lionel B&O George Washington 462. That's a beautiful locomotive. And then next to that, we've got a Lionel Aquarium car. Sometimes I have empty spaces on the display shelves that are too small for a locomotive. And so I'll just put something random in there like a caboose or in this case, an aquarium car. Now below that, this is a cool locomotive. This is a CSX SD70 made by Lionel, but it's actually a K-Line model. When K-Line was still in business, they had a train club and they offered their members a CSX SD70, this one right here, but they took orders and then went out of business before they could ever make the model. Well, when Lionel took over K-Line, they decided to do the right thing and go ahead and make the model to fulfill the orders for the people that had ordered them. And so this is one of those. So it's kind of like the last K-Line model ever made, except it was made by Lionel. Kind of neat. And then to the right of that, we've got an Atlas DTNI GP35 that I've weathered. Moving on down, we've got a Lionel Western Maryland three-truck Shea. 
And then next to that, we've got the Lionel equivalent of that MTH First Responders SD60E that you saw above. Below that, we've got a Lionel Seaboard C420 that I've weathered. And then next to that, we've got the MTH Amtrak Genesis. Below that, we've got a fantastic model and a fan favorite. This is the Lionel Vision Line GE Evolution Hybrid. And then next to that, we've got a Lionel Conventional FMH1644. This was given to me by a visitor to one of my open houses years ago. And then below that, we've got a Lionel Kansas City Southern ES44, followed by a Lionel Southern Trainmaster. All right, so we're done with this display case. Now we're going to move over to this display case. And first up, we've got a Lionel Command Control Rio Grande Rotary Snowplow. And then right next to that is a Lionel Pincy K4. On the next shelf down, we've got a Lionel Seaboard E8AA set. And then below that, we've got an MTH Southern 44-ton switcher. And, of course, then right here, we've got the Lionel NNW611. Beneath that, we've got a beautiful B&O F3AB set made by Atlas. And then on the next shelf down is yet another Lionel Norfolk Southern Heritage Diesel. This is the Monongahela ES44. Next to that is a Lionel Southern U30C. And then down here, we've got a Lionel Norfolk Southern Honoring Veterans SD60E. And next to it, this is not a locomotive, obviously, but it's still pretty cool. This is an MTH aquarium car that was put out by my local train club, the North Atlanta O-Gage Railroad Club, and it was put out in concert with the Georgia Aquarium, so it's an MTH Georgia Aquarium aquarium car. Pretty cool. And then below that, we've got a Lionel Lion Chief New York Central Mikado. And then right here is a Lionel Lion Chief LNN GP7. And then on this tiny shelf right at the bottom, we've got a post-war Lionel number 50 gang car. Moving back up, We've got some more metal shelving, and I've got a bunch of electrics here, so let's check these out. So first up, we've got a Lionel MPC era Pensy GG1 from circa 1977 or so. Then we've got an MTH Penn Central EP5, followed by an MTH Amtrak AEM7, and then at the very end there is an Atlas Trolley. Below that, we've got the Lionel Vision Line Amtrak GG1, followed by the Lionel Vision Line Pensy GG1. And then right here, we've got an MTH Pensy GG1. Underneath the MTH GG1, I've got a couple HO items. This is a Bombardier Alp 45 DP made by Atlas, and it's got a couple matching passenger cars as well. I have not done a review on this yet, but I will in the future. And then next to that, I've got an old Bachman UP GP40 that I've had forever. And it doesn't really run very well. I've actually used it for weathering tests over the years before weathering my more expensive models. If we move this way up here, we've got a Chessy System U30B made by MTH. To the right of that is a Conrail SD70 also made by MTH. Around the corner is yet another Conrail SD70, but this one is made by Lionel and it's been weathered. Here's a UP SD40 T2 tunnel motor made by MTH that's also been weathered. And then on these two shelves below, we've got four First Union Rail SD40-2s. These two are made by Atlas, and these two are made by Lionel. Now, I do have a third First Union SD40-2 made by Atlas. That's on the layout right now, so you'll see it in a few minutes. So that brings us to the bottom of the stairwell and this big wooden display case, and there's lots of good stuff in here. So at the top, we've got the MTH Rail King Coors Light Silver Bullet Train. There I am again. And this has always been a fan favorite. Down below that, we've got the gorgeous MTH Chessy M1. And I reviewed this not too long ago. Right here, we've got a Lionel Milwaukee Road H1644. And then next to that, we've got the Lionel 280 Southern 630. Moving down one shelf, we've got a very interesting looking diesel made by MTH. This is the B&M BL2 diesel. And then next to that, we've got the massive and gorgeous UP number 80 coal turbine made by MTH. This thing is gigantic. 
but it's gorgeous. Underneath the turbine, we've got one of my favorite paint schemes on a diesel. This is the Lionel Norfolk Southern 1982. And uh, I don't think it's based on a real paint scheme, but it just, it's always looked really, really cool. Then we've got the Lionel Pioneer Zephyr, which is all die cast metal construction. And this thing is awesome. Even if the folks at the factory over in China didn't know how to spell Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> One of these days I'll have to fix that. Anyway, here's a really cool set. This is the MTH Norfolk Southern Office Car Special. So it's got an F7A BBA set that goes with it. And there it is. It also has 10 matching passenger cars. It's a very cool set. And then right next to it, we've got a Lionel Savannah and Atlanta Heritage SD70 ACE. Below that, we've got an MTH Ohio Central GP40. And then right here is a Lionel set that I have not reviewed yet, but I will be reviewing it very soon. So this is an Alco FA2 FB2 set. So it's got an ABBA setup. It's very cool. And it comes with a bunch of really cool passenger cars as well. And like I said, I'll be reviewing this in the very near future. On the next shelf down, we've got a Lionel Diecast Metal Kansas City Southern ES44. And then next to that, we've got a Lionel Nickel Plate Road PAPB set. It's an ABA set. Very cool. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got the MTH Amtrak Turbo Train. Another really cool set. There it is. And there's the webcam where you can see the layout. I wonder if anybody's watching it right now. <laughs> All right, so with that, we are out of the stairwell and down into the main train room. Yeah, all that stuff you just saw, and we were only in the stairwell. <laughs> so now that we're down in the main room, let's go ahead and take a break and see where we are with the engine count. All right, so at our first count break, we've got 10 steam engines, 102 diesels. That's crazy. We're just through the stairwell, and we're at 102 diesels. Nine electrics, four miscellaneous items, and two HO locomotives. So right now, our total locomotive count is at 127. All right, so now we're on to this case, which is the first case in the main train room. So right up on top, we've got a Santa Fe FT diesel that comes out of the Lionel Line Chief Santa Fe Super Chief set that I reviewed not too long ago. And now let's go ahead and open up this case and check out what's inside. So right here, we've got the MTH Santa Fe Blue Goose 464 which is always a fan favorite. Below that, we've got the Lionel Santa Fe Northern 3759. One of my favorite all-time steam locomotives. It's not my favorite, but it's one of my favorites. Below that, we've got a model that's identical to it. This is the Frisco 4500 from Lionel. This one is brand new. That one's about seven or eight years old. And I just reviewed this one in December of 2020. Very cool model. Below that, we've got a BNSF Speeder from Lionel. Below that is the Lionel Burlington Northern Spirit of 76 U30C. On the next shelf down is an Atlas F3AB set in a Burlington paint scheme. Very cool. Below that is a Lionel Lion Chief Plus Burlington Northern SD60. And then right here, we've got the first tin plate train of the day. This is a Lionel pre-war 248 box cab, and these were made between 1927 and 1932. All right, now we're gonna make a left-hand turn and check out everything on this wall. And yeah, there's a lot to see. So starting up top, we've got another fan favorite. This is the Lionel Vision Line UP Challenger, a spectacular model. And if you haven't watched my review of this model yet, do yourself a favor and go watch it now. And right here we have another Lionel Vision Line model. This one is of a relatively obscure engine that many of you probably haven't heard of. It's called the Big Lad or Big Man, Big Boy, something like that. I don't know. Very obscure locomotive. Most people don't know about this one. <laughs> On the next shelf down, I've got a bunch of auxiliary tenders. But in front of those, I've got another UP Big Boy 4014. But this one is made by MTH. Very cool. And then I've got yet another big boy on the next shelf down. This one is also made by MTH. This is the 4014 restoration version. Very cool. And again, most of you probably haven't heard of 4014. It's a very little known locomotive. 
Right there, I've got a Lionel NNW Speeder. And then right here, I've got an MTH Duluth Masabi and Iron Range Yellowstone, which is an awesome locomotive. Below that, I've got a few European steam engines from MTH. This one right here is an SNCF 141 Mikado. I don't think I've reviewed this one yet. I should probably do that at some point. And then right here, we've got a Nord Brown 231 Pacific. To the left of that, I've got a beautiful EST 241A. And then below that, this thing is beautiful. This is a Bavarian S36 Express. To the right of that, we're back in the States with a Lionel Pensy 280H10. And then to the right of that, we've got a weathered UP FEF Northern number 843 made by MTH. All right, now we're going to move down and check out this display case. So starting at the top, we've got the pilot version of the Lionel EM1 locomotive. And in case you don't know, whenever Lionel does a pilot version of a locomotive, it's basically a version of that locomotive without any paint or decoration. Now, to be fair, it does have a sealant on it to protect it, but there is no real paint. And no, these are not meant to be painted by the customer. They're meant to look like this. And I love them because they really show off what goes into making these models. And it makes these models all that more impressive. So I love pilot versions. Some people, however, don't like them because obviously they don't look very realistic. But I think they look so cool. Now, you may be wondering why Lionel would do something like this and why these are called pilot models. And it all has to do with the development process when Lionel is designing a new model. So what typically happens is that the engineers at Lionel will design the model in the computer, and then they'll send the designs over to the factory in Asia. And then that factory in turn will send back to Lionel an engineering sample called a pilot, kind of like the pilot episode of a TV series. It's the first version of that model. And they send it to Lionel so that Lionel can check it out, inspect it and test it and make any notes for any changes that need to be made. And those pilot versions look very much like this. Crude, unpainted, not meant for general sale, very much meant for testing and development. And in fact, over the years, I've done some reviews on Lionel engineering prototypes. And so what I think happened was at some point in time, someone saw one of those engineering samples that looked like this and said, hey, that looks really cool. I want to buy one of those. And so Lionel said, okay, sure. So what they did is they took a production version of the model and just didn't paint it. And they put some sealant on it to protect it. And lo and behold, you have a pilot version of the model. Very cool. Now, speaking of pilots, I'm actually going to be getting a brand new pilot locomotive very soon. I ordered one of the Lionel Vision Line Brass Hybrid GS1 Pilot Editions. And that should be in very soon. In fact, it might be in before I'm done making this video. We'll have to see. And speaking of GS locomotives, well, here's a pilot version of a Lionel GS6 locomotive. Pretty cool. Right below that, we've got another pilot version. This is a Lionel Heavy Mikado. And then to the left of that, we've got a beautiful pilot version of the Lionel Southern Pacific AC-12 Cab Forward. And on the next shelf down, we've got the Lionel Virginian Allegheny. And to the right of that is a Lionel UP-412-2. Dropping down below that, we've got a Lionel Norfolk Southern Speeder. And then an MTH UPE6 ABA set. Very cool. And below that, we've got a Lionel Rio Grande F3 ABBA set. Also a very cool model. And then below that, we've got the MTH Canadian Pacific Christmas AC4400. And this is the one that has the Christmas LED lights, got the presents and the bells on the side. And this is based on a real locomotive. It's not made up. Next to that, we've got our first Weaver model of the day. This is a Weaver Boston and Maine 462 Pacific. The Peter Cooper, a very cool model. Next to that is a Lionel Pensy B6SB switcher. Below that is Lionel's version of cast number three. Next to that is another B6SB switcher. It's just like this one, except this one is for Santa Fe. And this is a fairly new model. I reviewed it in the 2020 Christmas Bonanza. So that is a very recent addition. 
And then next to that, we've got another Weaver Steam locomotive. This is a Canadian Pacific K5A. On the next shelf down, we've got a Lionel reissue of the famous Lionel Anniversary set from 1950. And I actually do have an original Anniversary set in my collection. It belonged to my dad when he was a kid, and then he later gave it to me. It's not in very good shape, however. In fact, I don't even think the locomotives are in operating condition at this point, but I do have it. Below that, we've got an MTH CSX ES44. Next to that is another MTH ES44. This one is painted up for Southern. And then next to that, we've got a Lionel UP SD45. All right, that does it for this case and this wall. So now we'll round the corner to the case of SD70s. Let's check it out. So starting from the top, we've got six Montana Rail-Link SD70 ACEs. The first five are made by MTH, and they are outstanding. The sixth and final one down here is made by Lionel. And Lionel kind of did a number on this one. For starters, they used the wrong shade of blue, so I had to weather the engine to try to hide that. But also, they've got the logo backwards. So yeah, not Lionel's finest hour for sure. Below that, we've got an MTH Canadian National. And then we've got some MTH UP Heritage SD70s. We've got the Western Pacific, the KD, Union Pacific, Mopac, Rio Grande, and Southern Pacific. And then finally, all the way at the bottom, we've got a Lionel Florida East Coast SD70 ACE. So yeah, there are 14 SD70 ACEs in this case. Pretty cool. If we go up and to the left of that case, there's a couple shelves above the door, and we've got some BNSF action going on here. So right there in the top left, we've got an MTH SD70 ACE. And then we've got an MTH ES44. Then there's a Lionel Diecast Metal ES44. And then, well, I'm sure a lot of you guys know what this one is. This is the AC6000 from the Lionel Ice Cold Express set. All right, that takes care of all the trains on shelves here in the main room. So let's take a break for an engine count, and then we'll move on to the hallway room. All right, so at our second count break, we now have 35 O-scale steam locomotives, 138 O-gauge diesels, 10 electrics, 7 miscellaneous, and 2 HO locomotives, and that brings the running count to 192. Okay, we're back and we're heading into the hallway room, which as you can see has lots of engines on display. They're all over the place here. So we'll start by turning around and looking at that area above the door opposite of where you just saw those BNSF engines. So at the top right, we've got a K-Line New York Central Plymouth switcher. Then we've got an MTH CSX Genset switcher. Then we've got yet another MTH CSX Genset switcher. And below that, we've got a heavily weathered Lionel diecast metal CSX gen set switcher. Heavily weathered because just like with the Montana Rail-Link SD70 that you just saw, Lionel got the wrong shade of blue on this CSX model. I don't know what it was, but for a while, Lionel was having a really hard time with getting the right blues. Anyway, next to that, we've got a really cool MTH NASA gen set switcher. And then right here, we've got a Lionel UP track inspection vehicle. And if we move to the left, we've got a couple more shelves. So on the top shelf, we've got the Lionel Abraham Lincoln funeral train, which is a pretty cool set. And on the bottom shelf, we've got a bunch of Lionel gen set switchers. So this is the original Vision Line UP gen set switcher. Then we've got US Army, Kansas City Southern, and BNSF. And if we move over here, we come to this wall, which has a whole bunch of stuff on it. So we'll start at the top. So first we've got this beautiful Lionel CNO Mallet. Looks great. Then we've got this breathtaking Lionel Southern Pacific AC12 cab forward, except this time with paint. Definitely one of my favorite locomotives. And then next to the cab forward, we've got this Lionel Kansas City Southern 210 for Texas. Another beauty, especially the tender. And below that, we've got two Redding T1s from Lionel. One is Redding number 2100, and then we've got 
a newer model that I just got a few weeks ago, and this is Conrail 2101. On the next shelf down, as you can probably already see, I've got a couple of GS series locomotives, this time with paint. So this is a Lionel GS2, number 4415. And then right here is MTH 4449 GS4 with the holiday LED lights on it. Pretty cool. Below that, we've got a Lionel NNW Y6B. And next to that, we've got a Lionel 115th Anniversary Berkshire. It's got that mirror finish. There I am again. Very cool. And below that, we've got the Lionel Vision Line Pinsy 0880CC2. And I would think that Lionel will probably reissue this model at some point in the near future, maybe 2022 or 23, I don't know, because they've been reissuing some of the older Vision Line locomotives. And, well, this is a beautiful model, so why not reissue it? And then to the left of that, we've got the Lionel UP FEF Northern number 844. That's a beautiful model. And then below that, we've got another really gorgeous model, the MTH CNO Greenbrier. All right, now we're going to take a look at the contents of this case, which is mostly New York Central steam locomotives, although there is a single Pensy locomotive that's kind of getting bullied by all the New York Central locomotives. And Chessie has rejoined us as well. So let's open up this case and have a look. All right, so up top, we've got the Dreyfus Hudson made by MTH. Below, we've got a Lionel J3A streamlined Hudson, and this was part of their Empire State Express set. Below that, we've got the beautiful Lionel Vision Line New York Central Niagara. That's an awesome model. And then below that, we've got an MTH New York Central Mohawk. And this is significant to me because it was the first scale steam engine that I ever bought. Moving on down, we've got a Lionel Pensy M1A. And then below that, we've got another incredible model. This is the Lionel Vision Line 700E Hudson. And who knows, maybe Lionel will bring back this one too in a few years. That'd be really cool. And then below that, we've got a Lionel Mohawk that was part of the water level freight set. And then right here on the bottom shelf is a complete surprise, folks. This is the newer Lionel J3A Hudson that was featured in their 2019 Volume 1 catalog. And what makes it special is that it has the same water scoop steam effect that was found on the Vision Line Niagara. And the surprise is that I had completely forgotten that I had one of these. In fact, I was kicking myself because I thought I had forgotten to order one. And I was actually in the process of trying to find one to buy. And lo and behold, I already have one. So yeah, I know you guys love it when I do these engine count videos. But the truth is that they serve a purpose for me as well. Because every now and then, it doesn't happen that often, but once in a blue moon, I will forget that I have something. And I'm sure what happened here was that when this engine arrived, it was part of a larger shipment of a whole bunch of stuff. And at the time, I forgot that this locomotive had the water scoop smoke effect. And so other stuff took priority. And this sort of got put on the back burner and stayed there. And eventually, I forgot that I even had it until I went to the train store and saw one of these and saw the water scoop smoke effect and said, boy, I got to get one of those. And little did I know, I had one the entire time. So yeah, it goes without saying that I have not done a review for this, but I will be doing one soon. So look for that in the near future. But wow, yeah, I can't believe I actually have one of these. That is so cool and such a nice treat. That takes care of this case. So now let's move over to this smaller case that contains a whole bunch of Norfolk Southern diesels. So sitting on top of the case, I've got the Trump and Biden hand cars made by MTH. And then if we open up the case itself, on the first shelf, we've got an SD70 made by Lionel, another SD70 made by Lionel, then I've got an SD70 made by MTH, and this has the same road number as the one above it. So I've actually got the same SD70, but one is made by MTH and one is made by Lionel. Pretty cool. Below that, we've got a Dash 9 made by Lionel. On the next shelf down is a really nice model. This is an MTH-8. And then on the last shelf, we've got an SD-90 from Lionel. 
All right, that takes care of this case. So now let's move on to this case. Up first, we've got a Lionel UP Challenger in sort of a fantasy striped paint scheme. I think this looks really cool. I know some people don't care for fantasy paint schemes, but you guys know how I feel about it. If it looks good, that's all I care about. And below that, we've got another Lionel UP Challenger, this time in a Greyhound paint scheme. Below that is a Lionel Santa Fe Alco PA AA set. I like this one a lot. Below that, we've got an MTH Kansas City Southern Support the Troops SD70 ACE. And next to that, we've got an MTH Southern GP9. Below that is the non-powered equivalent of the one above it. And then next to that, we've got a brand new Lionel CSX First Responders ES44. On the next shelf down is an MTH Montana Railink SD45 that sounds great. And next to that, we've got a Lionel Canadian National 10-wheeler. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got a few switchers. So right here is a weathered Atlas Conrail MP15DC. And next to that is a weathered MTH CSX SW1500. And at the end there is a Lionel Santa Fe NW2. And I don't think I've done a review for this yet. I should probably do that at some point. And next to that case, there's an identical looking case. So let's see what's in there. All right, so there's likely some fan favorites in this case, starting on top with the Lionel Polar Express 1225 Berkshire. And below that, of course, we've got the Lionel Pure Marquette 1225 Berkshire. Basically the same thing. And then we've got a Lionel Southern Berkshire. And my favorite part of this model, I'm not sure if you can see it too well, but on the front of the boiler, there's a little eagle. Anyway, below that, we've got one of my favorites, the Lionel Milwaukee Road S3 Northern number 261. This is a fantastic model. Below that, we've got a Lionel Amtrak F40PH along with a cabbage unit. Underneath that, we've got a Lionel Pensy 2104 Texas, another awesome model. And then below that, we've got another Lionel Milwaukee Road S3 Northern, this time in a Hiawatha paint scheme. Very cool. All right, so now we'll move up and over this door where I've got a couple more shelves. So right here, we've got a couple of Lionel post-war Santa Fe 2343s that have since been upgraded with command control. They're not in the best shape, but they do run. And next to that is a Lionel post-war 623 switcher that has also been upgraded to command control. Below that, is a Lionel MPC era Santa Fe 8900-464 from around 1978. And then right here is a Lionel Chicago Northwestern GP38 from around 1992. And this is significant to me because this was the first engine that I ever bought with my own money all the way back in 1992. All right, now we're gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna turn around this way and go into the Colorado room for just a moment because there's just one shelf in here, and we'll just include it with the hallway room. So right here is a Lionel Conrail Rail Bonder. Then we've got a really cool looking MTH UP SD40-2. And then next to that is a Lionel UP Ballast Tamper. All right, now we'll go back into the hallway room again, and behold, the last display case here in the basement not the last display case in the entire house, as you'll see in just a little bit, but the last one in the basement. And this one is actually the newest display case as well. I just installed this a few weeks ago. And as you can see, it's not fully occupied yet. So let's go ahead and check it out. Up first, we've got a Lionel Southern 462 Crescent Limited. Very cool. And to the left of that, we've got the MTH Erie Triplex, a fantastic model if there ever was one. That thing is amazing. Below that, we've got one of the newer Lionel Milwaukee Road Bipolars. And then we've got another one next to that, except that this is the pre-war inspired state set Bipolar. Below that, we've got the beautiful MTH Empire State Express 440. And next to that, I've got a Lionel Heavy Mikado that is painted, but unlettered. And one of these days, I will get around to lettering it. And then below that, we've got a brand new Lionel GMNO SD40. And then finally, we've got a couple really cool trains here. These were put out by Lionel to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad. 
And so we've got UP119 and Jupiter and a couple cars behind each engine. And the car immediately behind each engine is a sound car that generates the sounds of the steam engine because the models of the engines themselves are too small for a sound system. Very cool. Now, I have not reviewed these yet, but I will be putting out a review as soon as possible. I've actually already filmed the unboxing and I released that to my Patreon supporters, but the full review will be done at some point in the future as soon as I can. All right, so for our third count break, we have 72 steam locomotives, 171 diesels, 12 electrics, 12 miscellaneous, and then those two HO locomotives. So the new running count is 269. All right, so the next place we're gonna go is upstairs and we'll check out all the locomotives that are on display there. And we'll also check out any locomotives that happen to be in my garage workshop right now. So in my living room, right above the TV, I've got a couple shelves. On the top shelf is an MTH Lionel Corporate 10 plate 249E locomotive. And then below that is an MTH Lionel Corporate 10 plate 261E. And each of those pulls a set that they were part of. So the 249 pulls a Christmas set and the 261 pulls a distant control freight set. And then on the mantle in my living room, I've got an MTH locomotive. This is a Reading and Northern 462. Looks really cool. And then in my foyer, I've got three sets on display. So on the right hand side, I've got an MTH Lionel Corporate 10 plate girls set. And the engine on the front is a 263E. Then I've got another O-Gage tin plate set above the door. That's an MTH Lionel Corporate tin plate Pensy box cab set. And the locomotive is a number 256 box cab. And then finally right here, we've got a Lionel Conventional Classics New Haven freight set. And the locomotives up front, we've got a New Haven F3A and a non-powered F3B. Now we're in my office where I've got a bunch of tin plate trains as well as a bunch of O-scale passenger cars on that wall. So starting up here, we've got a Lionel Corporate tin plate standard gauge number 7E. And by the way, just in case you haven't picked it up yet, when I say Lionel Corporate tin plate, that's not made by Lionel. It's made by MTH under license. So it's got the Lionel name on it, Lionel boxes and everything, but it's made by MTH or it was. MTH let the license expire a couple years ago. Right here, we've got a Lionel Corporate tin plate number eight Paisy Winter Trolley. And then at the end of this shelf, we've got a Lionel Corporate tin plate 400E, the big daddy. I love that thing. That's one of the best locomotives ever made in tin plate and standard gauge, and really one of the best locomotives ever made, period. Then down here, we've got a Lionel Corporate Tin Plate 381 SS Brute. There it is. I had it boxed up for a number of years, but now it's on display finally. And then below that, I've got an original Lionel Pre-War number 10. Very cool. It does work. And then around here, we've got a Lionel Corporate Tin Plate New Haven Bipolar E4. Very cool. And this is part of a New Haven state set that MTH made. So it's got the bipolar up front and then those passenger cars. It's an awesome set. And then if we move this way above the door, I've got a Lionel Corporate tin plate standard gauge baby blue Comet set with a number 384 locomotive at the lead. And then over here, this is a Lionel Corporate tin plate armored motor car outfit. It's a reproduction of a set that was made by Lionel during World War I, and the locomotive has a cannon on top. Pretty cool. And then right here is an original Lionel 259E from the 1930s. Here in my dining room, I've got a single set on display, at least for right now. This is a big standard gauge set. It's an MTH Lionel Corporate tin plate state set, headed up by a 400E in the Southern Crescent Limited paint scheme. And this set is special for two reasons. Number one, it's got my voice on it. MTH was kind enough to let me record the PFA audio sequences on this engine. 
So when you play the PFA sequence, you hear my voice. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link to it in this video. And secondly, this may have been the last Lionel Corporate tin plate train to be made by MTH because they stopped doing Lionel Corporate tin plate. And as far as I know, this was the last set that was made. And there were 10 of these made. Legacy Station did a custom run. I have one, and I guess nine other people have one as well. But yeah, very cool. I love this set. All right, now we're in my garage workshop where I've got several locomotives hanging out. So first up, we've got a fan favorite. This is my Lionel Nickel Plate Road 765 model. And it's on the workbench right now because I'm repairing an issue with the front lighting board that little board right there. And as soon as it's repaired, I'll put it back together and return it to service. Next to that, I've got a Lionel Postwar 224, followed by a Postwar 2025 that I'm rebuilding. And then next to that, I've got a Lionel Vision Line Norfolk Southern Gen Set Switcher. It's got a burnt out headlight that I need to replace. And if we move over here, I've got a few things on this table. So right up front is an MTH Rail King Pensy 280 that came out of a Rail King starter set that I got for my son when he was five years old, so 2006. So this locomotive is 15 years old and it still runs just like it's brand new. It is awesome. Behind that is a Lionel HO Santa Fe Berkshire from the Cajon Flyer set that I reviewed in 2019. And then right here is a Lionel Pre-War 249E that needs to be rebuilt. And lastly, there's a brand new locomotive on this table. It's actually part of a set, and I still need to film the unboxing and the review. And so for that reason, the set is still in the box. This is the Lionel 120th Anniversary Deluxe F3 Freight Set. And there's a Santa Fe F3 diesel inside. This set is great, and I will be reviewing it very soon. All right, let's see where we are now. We've got 82 steam engines, 175 diesels, 13 electrics, 13 miscellaneous, three HO locomotives, and eight standard gauge locomotives. And that brings the current count to 294. We're getting up there. All right, up next, we're gonna check out any locomotives that are still in boxes, either here under the layout or upstairs in storage. All right, I'm on the top floor of my house, and this is the closet where I store my Christmas decorations and Christmas tree and so forth. And I've got three holiday sets in storage here, and therefore three more locomotives. And these are all G-Gage. So on the bottom is an LGB holiday set that I've had for a very long time. Above that is a Lionel G-Gage Polar Express set that I got as a gift a few years ago. And then above that is one component of the Lionel G-Gage Holiday Tradition Express set. Unfortunately, I don't have the set box here right now. That's at my office, and when the office closed for COVID, it got left there, and I'll have to get it back whenever the office opens again. But I do have one representative of that set, and that is the add-on Calliope car. All right, now we're back downstairs and under the layout where I've got just a few locomotives in boxes. So this white box is one of many boxes like this that contains some Lionel post-war trains. And I've got two locomotives in this box and they are the original Lionel UP 2023 locomotives from 1950. Also under the layout is the Gold Rush Express G-Gage set made by New Bright. I picked this up maybe 10 years ago or so for about 40 bucks just to see what kind of a set you could get for $40. And then finally, the last locomotive that I have boxed up right now is this MTH Norfolk Southern Dash 9 from around 2005. This is another significant model to me because this was the first modern scale command control equipped engine that I ever bought way back in 2005. And it's in the box because it needs a new lighting board. And so I originally boxed it up a little while ago to send to MTH for repair. But then I decided not to do that. I decided to buy a PS3 conversion kit and just go ahead and convert this to PS3 because it's a PS2 diesel. So I've got the PS3 kit and so now I need to do the conversion. And as soon as I do that, this will go back up on display. All right, so now we're getting into crazy count territory or maybe we already were in crazy count territory. But anyway, we've got 82 steam locomotives, 178 diesels, 
13 electrics, 13 miscellaneous, 3 HO, 4 G gauge, and 8 standard gauge locomotives. And that puts us at 301. Wow. And the last thing we're going to do is check out all the locomotives that are actually on the layout right now. Now, the obvious place to start on the layout is around the turntable where there are 18 locomotives. So let's check them out. So right there in the middle, we've got a Lionel Norfolk Southern Trackmobile. And then if we pull back, we've got an MTH Conrail Dash 8 and then a Lionel Conrail SD38. Next to that, we've got a Lionel Central of Georgia ES44. Then we've got a Chicago Northwestern SD70 from MTH, a Lionel Texas Special SD70, a Lionel Virginian SD70, and then we've got a Lionel Diecast Metal UP ES44 in the Boy Scouts paint scheme. On the other side of that ES44 is a Lycoming Valley GP35 from Lionel. Then we've got a Lionel Southern Pacific A6 Atlantic, which I still need to review. Next to that is the Bush 41 SD70 ACE from Lionel. Next to that is a Lionel UP SD40 T2 tunnel motor, and I don't think I have reviewed this one either. Next to that is a Lionel Norfolk and Western SD45. And then next to that is a Lionel UPSD70. And this model is special because this was the first Lionel command control engine that I ever bought. And so for that reason, it is almost always on the layout. Now, I've never reviewed this model because it actually predates my YouTube channel. I got this around 2005. Actually, I didn't buy it. It was given to me as a Christmas gift. So it's about 16 years old. I've had it for a long time. Anyway, moving on, right here we've got another European locomotive from MTH. This is a Raylion Trax F140 AC2 electric. Pretty cool. Beyond that is an Atlas Canadian Pacific MP15 DC switcher. Beyond that is an MTH Lehigh Valley GP9, which I'm just noticing is missing one of the rear vents. I'm going to have to fix that. And then way back there is an MTH chassis system NW2 with a calf unit. Moving on from the turntable, also here on the layout in the main room is this very cool looking Lionel West Fork Logging Heisler. And moving down from the Heisler, we've got this engine. Uh-oh. This is an MTH Rail King Trump Pence ES44 that was made before the election last year. Now, I get these solely for collecting purposes. I'm not trying to endorse any candidate or anything like that. And just to prove that, I'm also getting one of the new Biden-Harris SD70s that Lionel is going to be coming out with soon. So in the end, it'll all even out. Over here at the diesel shop on the main table, there are three more locomotives. So there's an MTH Norfolk Southern SW1500 right there. And then on the inside of the shop, I'm not sure how well you can see them, but there's an MTH UP GP38 and then an Atlas First Union SD40-2. And back here in the Carolina room, we've got a Lionel Alaska F7 ABBA set. The two A units were sold together, and then I added the two B units as separate sale items. But yeah, this is a gorgeous set. It's also got a bunch of passenger cars with it. And I'm actually getting ready to review this set very soon. That's why it's on the layout right now. Here in the Colorado room, I've got a small ON30 layout. It's just a loop of track, nothing fancy at all. But I do have three ON30 locomotives, all made by Bachman under their Spectrum product line. So right over there is a Baldwin 460. And then back here is a side rod gas mechanical locomotive, very weathered. And then over here is a Whitcomb 50 ton center cab. And finally, we come to the last locomotives of the day, and these are actually brand new. They just showed up a few days ago, at least as of the time I'm filming this scene. And of course, these are the new Lionel Vision Line GS Series locomotives. So right here, we've got the Vision Line Southern Pacific 4449 GS4. Then we've got the Vision Line GS1 Brass Hybrid Pilot. And then right here, we've got Southern Pacific 4457, another GS4, and that's part of a set, which I'll be reviewing very soon. 
All right, here we are at the end, and the new grand total for locomotives in my collection as of February 2021 is now 334, and that represents a gain of 103 locomotives over the last three years. That's crazy. You know, it's always a surprise to me how much my collection has grown over the years. I kind of lose track while it's happening, and so it's always good to do these count videos because, wow, it's a pretty big collection, and that's just 334 locomotives. That doesn't take into account all the rolling stock. One of these days, I would like to do a video where I show you all my rolling stock, but that will be quite the undertaking because, by my estimate, there's at least 800 plus pieces of rolling stock in my collection. So yeah, it's a big collection. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And don't forget that Patreon supporters get all sorts of extra benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon site. Again, that's Patreon patreon.com slash Eric's Trains. And finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com slash store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. the corner this is an mth pan am ah shit. what is it <laughs> i can't remember <laughs>